Well, we're getting ready to leave Smyrna. Got everybody packed. This is my brother Dave, my brother Phil, the two black beasts on the back of the thing, and my orange bike's in the truck. And there's our chauffeur Susie getting in, but for some reason she's not getting in the driver's side. We'll check back in with you later when we get the Natchez. Okay, we just found us a timber rattler crossing the road and we're taking a video of him. This is a monster here. Look at that thing. It's got a rattle, it's got 10 or 12 rattles on it. I hope you guys can see this, it's about as big as I can blow it up. top of the emerald mound this whole area out in front of us was supposed to be for festivals and celebrations and stuff and with supposedly structures on either end uh, where we've just added over here on that far end for uh, whatever ceremonial purposes who knows this video to show a little bit of how quiet and peaceful it is on the Natchez Trace. A little bit of traffic but not very much. Lots of trees with Spanish moss hanging down from them. Just quiet, you can hear the birds. There's the 11, 11 mile post. Only 433 miles to go. It's just really peaceful. I'll turn the camera around. You can see my brothers behind me, I think. We went on uh, a little section of the old original trace, the dirt road. They have a little bit, little section of it. You can kind of see what it looked like. I'll post a picture of that. It was kind of cool. It was almost like walking back in time. I'm sure the people back then wish they had a road like this. But pretty cool. Okay, we're at, uh, I don't know, about 13 miles in, I think. And we're at the uh, Mount Locust A home. And it's a, uh, it's a, uh, 
was a, a stop along the trail. They called them a stand, but it's what you and I might call a B&B a &B or a, back then they called them like inns where the uh, hikers would stop. Uh, people or travelers with their horses and hiking and maybe even maybe even wagons uh, coming back. And they would stop here and buy supplies and, and maybe spend the night or whatever. Uh, this is the last original standing stand on the Natchez Trace. So we're gonna stop here. We're doing our best to meet, beat the rain uh, before we get to Port Gibson. But uh, some of these things are too neat to just to pass by. So we wanted to come check it out. So here it is. As I'm walking up to it, you can see my brother Phil up there on the front porch checking it out with his flashing helmet. <laughs> got clapboard siding on it but I'm sure it's a log structure if it's not I'd be greatly surprised walk up the rock here there's no one here yet it's nine o'clock on a Sunday morning I don't think they open till 9 30 or 10 and on Sunday it might be a little bit later A lot of the places along here are just uh, little historic markers and things like this. But uh, you know, this thing like that, a little place to stop and read a sign. But this stuff like this is pretty cool. This stuff has been here since uh, like 1800s and uh, you know, been rebuilt and refurbished and stuff. Phil's taking some pictures inside, so we'll let him do that. Phil just told me that uh, he read that this path leads to a slave cemetery. Phil, I've got a feeling you're going to go back there and there's nothing marked. They never marked, they almost never marked the slave cemeteries. There's several of them in Smyrna. But uh, it sure would have been nice if they had. But... So we're going to go check that out. Okay, we're coming up on the uh, slave cemetery here. They've got it marked off. Oh, they've even got names on it. Only one unmarked stone remains. The name of persons known to be buried here are listed below. Uh, wow. it's, it's nice that they have that, at least some names. Yeah, the stones are very small. I don't know if you can see that one stone way over there. They've got it fenced off. I don't know if I can zoom once I'm already started. Yeah, I can. There you go. You can see one of the little cemetery stones right there.
I'm going to give you a quick uh, look at this beautiful bed and breakfast we're staying at. Uh, these videos got to stay real short, so I'm going to try to do this quick. Okay, so we had this great big storm here at Port Gibson, and now the power is all off at our bread and be bed and breakfast where we're staying, and it's uh, power's off all over town. So, so I guess tonight we're just going to sit up with flashlights and tell ghost stories like we did when we were kids. <laughs> should be here very soon and as it turns out we could have made it all the way to our destination today on our bikes the radar stayed right next to us but never did take hold of us that's the way it goes is a little rest stop at the Pearl River which feeds the big reservoir that we just rode by. It's very muddy but it's it's really pretty here. better on this video than the last my brother Phil is here and we're in the town of Kosciuszko Kosciuszko Mississippi Mississippi and it's got a beautiful Victorian homes and a beautiful courthouse square and we're just uh, we've already had dinner and we're just tooling around and doing a little tourist stuff so uh, I hope you can hear this one better Well, we're 
we're about ready to uh, leave Cosico or however you say it <laughs> and uh, Cosigo, Cosisco Co and head up to uh, uh, French camp which is this is one of our the shortest days that we have uh, we're doing uh, about 20 miles today and we waited around here to try to avoid the rain showers so we hope we make it without getting soaked see ya Once again, we are making the supreme sacrifice and checking out all these little places to stay. So this is where we're staying tonight. I know it really looks rough, but we're going to find our way to make it through it. What a beautiful little cabin right here at French Camp. It's, this one is called the Bread and, Bre Bread and Breakfast Junior. Beautiful little place with little loft bedrooms, really cool.
this is Jackson Falls. I'm going to put some pictures on here, but I don't think the pictures are going to do it justice, so I'm going to shoot a little video. I'm not sure the video will do it justice either. So we have uh, climbed down. You can see some stairs over there, and that's just the start of it. We've climbed down about 30 stories down into this gorge, and uh, we actually started way up there. The bikes are, are up in that area, and we had to climb all the way around that rim and down. And uh, it's just gorgeous. It's all, I mean, it's all dug out. You can see my brother David up there horsing around on top of the falls. See if he can slide down. But it is just gorgeous. And hopefully, with the video, you can kind of get a feel for what it looks like a little better than you can with a picture. So the water comes down from up there. Probably pool. David, does it pool up there a little bit? Does it pool up there a little bit? No. Just flat rock and slide straight down those flat rocks onto these flat rocks. Comes down here. and on down to the stream. Really beautiful, it's called Jackson Falls. And uh, I guess we're gonna start heading back up there. I was kinda hoping there'd be a tram or an elevator or something down here, but it doesn't look like that's the case. 